everybody. Nancy here from Fancy Nancy Diamond Painting. Um, with another Canvas Conversations for you. I have a lot of stuff to, to talk about. And uh, honestly, most days I'm sitting home by myself with my dogs. Well, I guess that's not by myself. Uh, so, yeah, I'm one of those crazy people that I talk to my dogs all day long. First thing I'm gonna do is put on these new stickers from Elizabeth at Happy Hippo Finds. She sends these beautiful stickers with every order. So I'm getting quite a collection. I should have put them all closer together, I guess. I'm gonna throw away this little pile of garbage. So I am still working if I can do this without dumping everything. There we go. On my feather, I, I did a bunch of it. And then I, I know it's small. I know I should be done by now. I understand. But I'm not. Get over it. <laughs> I'm trying to. Have you noticed that diamond painters when they don't have time to diamond paint all the time, make excuses like, oh, I've been so busy. Oh, I had so much going on. Oh, I... and then I think, why do we do that? Why do we feel guilty for not doing a craft? Do you do that? Do you make excuses? I know I've already told everybody that I am a very slow diamond painter. Let me fix this. Camera, sorry for moving you around so much. But that's not 100% true in some cases. Um, I am just not able to get myself going and uh, diamond paint, do a little stroke awareness talk. Some of you are disabled and have dealt with fatigue, depression, anxiety. There's a lot that goes with it. And I have never been that person who had anxiety. I was more of a get over it kind of person. And I, I really regret that attitude. I, I, I consider myself um, a, what's the word? empathetic person. I want to help people, but um, I was also raised in a family where you just had to get going. You just had to do things. You can't spend your days moping. Bad things happen and you pick yourself up and you keep going. But, but lately I'm more of a be kind to yourself, person. Um, if you're having a bad day, have a bad day. You don't need to fake it for anybody. You can just spend the day in bed, go watch a movie if you need to, do whatever you need to do to, um, feel better. Oh, there's no glue in here. Okay, let me put the glue in my pen. See, this is what I mean. Something as simple, whoops, as reaching over and picking up a little tab of pink stuff can be very difficult. If I don't stop hitting this phone, 
I need something with that like anti-wobble feature. You know, they have those TV cameras that don't shake even if you try to shake them. Okay, let me get to work here and start chit-chatting. It's kind of hard for me to do two things at once. Um, the last time we had a talk. What did I just do with that um, hippo hook? She calls them hippo holders because it's Happy Hippo Finds is the name of her group. And if you know Elizabeth, she is a lover of all things hippo. So I know whenever I want to get her something, I just go with a hippo to begin with. Ooh, I lost my drill. And, uh, okay, last time I talked, I was going to the wedding. We were flying to Boston and then driving up to Vermont. And it, it was an ordeal, like it always is quite an ordeal for me to fly anywhere. But Jim was with me the whole time, so... We didn't have any problems. Um, the wedding was beautiful. It was my nephew's wedding. All my brothers and sisters were there. And we had a lovely added surprise of being, the wedding was held in the town where one of my mother's best friends lives. She has had two best friends for years and years and years. And their names are Nancy and Jean. And they're my namesakes. I was named after them. My name is Nancy Jean. And uh, that's one of the funny things that I know how long someone has known me by what they call me. If someone calls me Nancy Jean, like it's one word, Nancy Jean, they've known me since I was a little girl because everyone called me Nancy Jean. Until my Aunt Nancy moved away, she moved from New Jersey to Ohio when I was little, I was probably five or six, I guess, I'm guessing. And um, my Aunt Jean and her husband, um, they had a friend who was a lawyer. So they had him draw up documents. It all looked very official. Officially changing my name to Jean Nancy because I had been abandoned by my Aunt Nancy. It was, it was a big joke. Very funny. Sorry, sorry, I'm fixing the camera a little bit. But as I got older, I would go to my Aunt Jean's house and they would all call me Jean Nancy. And, at the, and I didn't know what had been done. I wasn't really in on the joke. I just knew they called me Jean Nancy, so I was very confused <laughs> as a little kid. That is not my name. Very silly. We were part of a, a group of my parents' friends growing up where we all were around each other as kids, doing Easter egg hunts and um, my mother loved to do fun things like um, breakfast picnics. She would show up with all us kids in the car ready to go at someone's house in the morning and say, come on, let's go. We're going to the park. We're going to have a breakfast picnic. And we would have 
breakfast and just play all day at the park. It was awesome. And I feel like people don't do things like that anymore. As families, you know. We had a lot of wonderful traditions with different families, Easter egg hunts at Aunt Nancy's house, and things like that, that, that I feel like people don't really have anymore. I know they have new traditions and find their own fun, but, um, I don't know. Hi, oh, so let me show you, this pen is by, um, Denise. I'll put the link underneath. This is a pen she designed for me. I got to choose all the colors. It's the Fancy Nancy Diamond Painting Pen. And um, she can make more of these. If you if you want one, just reach out to her on our Etsy shop. You can, uh, you can comment to anybody who has an Etsy shop. And my tray today is my strawberry tray and this is from this is done on a 3d printer by dan um he makes his wonderful trays he has so many shapes and sizes you choose the cut on this one you choose the colors for the the berry and the leaves i went very traditionally you can see um, and I do have a stopper to use with it. There's a little, uh, stopper that fits on, on the end here. Wow, you can really see my whole dirty house. Look at that. Not that I'm embarrassed, but. Okay, so where did I leave off? We went to my nephew's wedding. We got home and I kind of slipped into a coma for a while. Like I didn't talk to anybody or any, do anything. I was just exhausted. Um, neuro fatigue is, is probably the worst part about having a stroke. Cause not only does is it hard to do certain things? The fatigue makes it horrible. You know, I I was I posted something about uh, you know my husband said, hey, let's go over to Mount Vernon, and uh, I have to drop off my phone to be fixed, and um, I was thinking we could go see a movie. Okay, that's great. So I got up in the morning and took a shower and got dressed, put my shoes and socks on, and I was ready for a nap. I was exhausted. I was joking. I'm like, we haven't even left yet, and I'm pooped. So... You know, doing a large trip with standing up and sitting down and planes and and uh, changing planes. I tend to buy tickets where we have to change planes one time just because of the price. Some companies like Southwest if you go at a more inopportune time, you can get a cheap ticket on a non-stop. Um, but the Southwest, I don't think they fly, or, or it was more expensive or something. Um, I forget, I researched it, but I forget what I found out. Um, no, that's all gone. Very good. Let me go back and finish all this spot over here. Um, we, we did okay. 
we did okay. It was all worth it to go to that uh, beautiful, beautiful wedding in this little church in Exeter, New Hampshire. I really love New England, and that was just about as New England as New England gets. So we got home from that, and then I was busy talking to my mom. You know, I knew she was in a lot of pain. Nobody really knew why. She's got a bunch of different medical issues that cause her pain. And she just got worse and worse and worse. Went to the doctor, had x-rays, talked to her chiropractor, and nobody could figure out what was going on with her. Nobody. And, uh, Finally, she went to the ER in the middle of the night because she was in so much pain, she just couldn't stand it anymore. And they did more x-rays, looked, did an MRI, and found out she had a fractured hip and she'd been walking around on her fractured hip for over a month, including up, up in Vermont at the wedding. And um, I was just in disbelief. So now she had to have surgery and get pinned together. And so I was talking to her about it and she says, you know, they make it sound like you're getting put together with sewing pins, being pinned, having your hip pinned. It sounds like such a cute little thing. She says, but actually they're great big screws as big as your pinky. But people don't say screw because it sounds like, you know, you're getting screwed. This is my, my 83 year old mom saying this. Uh, she's got a funny sense of humor. I'm, and I'm very glad that I got it. Uh, some of her, her funnier things she said. Um, some people would probably be a little Paul, appalled. And that's that's a joke she says some people you know she'll say something and they get upset and she says, i was i was just joking i didn't mean it and they say well if you didn't mean it why did you say it so that's our joke when we say something and we're all laughing about it you know like oh that was a little mean if you didn't mean it, why did you say it? I, I have to look back because sometimes I say things that, and, or write things in a group that I look back and I'm like, wow, that looked mean. That, that really looked bitchy. I don't ever mean it that way. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I do a little bit, but that's just because of what I call stroke brain, um, little things bother me. They itch at my brain. And sometimes, because most stroke patients suffer with a lack of filter. You know those people who just blurt out whatever they, they think and they have no filter and they have no way of knowing when there are things that they shouldn't say out loud. Well, that's stroke patients all the time. Um, something's bothering me. It, it has to come out. There's no filter. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. 
I think I'm lucky that I'm generally a nice person. But, you know, things bother me sometimes. We all have those certain things that, that bother us. So anyway, my mom has her, um, her surgery and she, you know, at the same time, we're all flipping out because my father has Alzheimer's and doesn't really function without my mom. So she goes to into a rehab hospital. What is he gonna do? Well, it turns out that um, she arranged to have all her rehab at home, which is pretty awesome that they'll do that for you. So she went home after the hospital and they've got PTs, physical therapist, occupational therapist, everybody comes in, not just for her, but for my dad too. So that worked out well. Then we get a call that Jim's, my husband's grandmother, who lives right near us, had a fall. So now Grandma Betty had a fall, and um, find out that she's fractured her hip and has to basically have the exact same operation that my mother just had. So we're dealing with everybody. I'm worrying about everybody in the hospital. Um, Grandma Betty, uh, she's never been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but you know, she definitely has memory issues and some dementia going on. And, uh, she's um, 87. So now, then she's in the hospital and then she can't go home. Um, so she has, she's going to get her rehab in a, in a nursing home setting. So now I'm worried about her. And, uh, all this stuff going on. All this stuff. It's, if it's not one thing, it's another. And now for the good news, my nephew, my sister's son, and his girl just had their baby this morning. No, last night. Uh, little girl. Everything went well. Yeah, I know she had to have a cesarean, but that's not the end of the world. She'll be back on her feet soon. Baby's happy and healthy. And my other nephew, this is my other sister's oldest boy. His wife is expecting as well. And that will be their second child. So there's just all these babies and Oh, the other thing was that after this whole thing with my mom, they really, um, my parents are still in their own home. And they've been searching for assisted living that will take both of them together. And they finally made a decision and will be moving into assisted living at the end of this week. It all happened very fast. Um, which is good. Which is good. Um, 
Right now they have a caretaker in their own home, but it, it all just gets more and more and more difficult. So there's just a lot of hard stuff. There's a lot of happy stuff. There's a lot of hard stuff. Um, I, I get very frustrated because I can't help them. I mean, I'm disabled. We're living in Illinois now, so we're not close to my parents. Um, all I can do is call and be supportive. Try to make mom laugh a little bit. Lighten the mood. Um, so yeah, it's been probably a month since I've actively been diamond painting and making videos and I have a bunch of bunch of unboxings to do okay I hate when the symbol is number nine and then you find it on the key And number nine is number 21. <laughs> so I've just pulled out number nine. Got to put that away. Find 21. Funny. Um, I ordered a frame for my other teacup kitten. So I have all these diamond paintings that I want to get framed and finished. I don't feel like they're finished until they're framed and hopefully in someone else's possession. <laughs> the teacup kittens I'm keeping. The first one I have framed on the wall. And I bought a matching frame for the second one. And frames are expensive. What is what is your favorite way to frame? Um, my my teacup kittens are the ones that I'm gonna frame. Prof that I frame perfect. Well, not professionally. It's me doing the framing, but or actually bought an expensive frame and a mat so that it'll look beautiful. Um, I did a video very early on that was um, framing using a stretched canvas. I buy a blank stretched canvas from walmart.com or anything, Amazon, anything like that. They're very inexpensive. And for me, my thought process was that it's more therapy for my hand because then I, I paint it. I have the fun of finding a, a color that will work. It's funny because I used to have so many of those little latex bottles of paint. Um, just hundreds of them. And I worked for a paint company. So if I wanted more, I could have gotten more. I had every color and I would mix and match and I, I painted so many things. I would paint ornaments and um, little wood plaques. Anything I could paint, I would paint. I had a lot of fun with it. But then before Jim and I got married, before I had my stroke, we cleaned up the house. We emptied out the basement that was full of 17 years worth of junk and we were downgrading everything because we were moving to a smaller apartment and then we moved into our house and it was just easier to have less stuff so we got rid of my paints was one of the things that that went um 
And for anyone who's panicking right now, because it would make me panic to think of throwing away craft supplies, I, I didn't throw away anything. Everything that I gave away got, got donated to somebody who wanted it. I, there's a website called freecycle.org where it'll hook you up. You can list things just like you're selling them on eBay only. It's all free. People just have to come to your house and pick it up. So I had a lot of stuff and that was one of the things I did was all my craft supplies. And uh, so now it kind of makes me happy to have a reason to buy more little bottles of latex paint. Um, I like them. I like mixing them and making my own colors. So I paint this stretched canvas and then I cut off everything around the the picture when you're when you're framing with a mat you don't have to cut all this off because it gets covered up but when you're mounting on a stretched canvas you, you need to cut all that stuff off so I trim it real carefully and then paint the canvas a beautiful color that will match correspond and then mount it so I had a couple that I had already mounted. I thought they looked pretty good. And then they started folding. Like they were they were partials that I got from China folded up. So I had to, I think I, I put them under books or something. But then I didn't do anything else with them and I mounted them and as a few months went by, I could see the creases were coming back even stronger than they were before. So the other day I sat down and I carefully peeled them off the canvases and I put them between some pieces of cardboard and stuck them under my bed. So now I have those two that will be flat as a pancake very, very soon. That method works really, really well. Um, and you don't have, like, you don't, when you iron things, sometimes the glue is melting and you have all these issues. Um, none of that. It just, just presses everything flat, sets the beads really well. So I have to remount those. I usually mount with double-sided tape, which I have a lot of. I have three more, three or four more diamond paintings that are complete where I have to choose a a canvas and choose some colors and start painting and usually when I do that I have to do two or three coats before it's fully covered and doesn't look streaky or anything so I have to paint those I have to mount those and I have the frame for the teacup kitten that I need to um, assemble, unbox, assemble, and put the diamond painting in. So I have a lot of framing stuff that I'm planning on doing and doing on camera. So I was thinking that I would do it and edit it in a way so that it's not boring as heck. Um, I have a little bit of angst about putting the frame together on camera. I want you guys to see how easy it is. But the last one I did, 
I got completely, I, I wouldn't let my husband help me because I wanted to do it. Um, I got completely flustered in the middle of it and had to just put it away, just stop working on it. And I picked it up the next day and then I was like, oh, okay. I watched a couple YouTube videos. That's, that's the thing these days, like there's no, not, not like I can't, you can't say I can't do this. I don't, because I don't know how. There isn't anything that you can't look on the internet and figure out how to do it. I remember this one comedian. He says, he says, those are the words you don't hear anymore is I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Is your phone broken? I was talking to Jim's grandfather, uh, Grandpa Ted, and he was saying that he, in this last move, he misplaced his phone book with all his phone numbers in it. And my first thought was, why aren't they in your phone? And I realized, you know, he's of an age that probably doesn't have everything in his phone. Me, my whole life is on my phone. Are you like that? Or are you, are you any, are you still kind of old fashioned about certain things? I'm sorry this angle isn't very good. I wish I had a better way of mounting my camera. But I, I could never figure out how to do that top down view. What did I just say? You're not allowed to say, I don't know anymore. But, um, you know, there's, there's getting all the, the right gear is an issue. Things to hold your phone, to mount and. <sighs> Gotta tell you, I love this feather. I really do. It has been a joy to work on. And I enjoy it. That is Bibi's bark that scares me out of my wits. She hears a car outside. And now she's gonna woof at them. Bibi! Stop. Stop it. We have a, a next door neighbor. This is an apartment. Um, and I'm, I, for as many years as I've lived in an apartment, I'm not a fan of apartment living. I'm just not. The people are too close. And, uh, Next door, they moved in, a bunch of 20-something kids, and they had a dog, a pretty big dog, who barks all day. Right now, I don't hear anything, but it barked all morning today. So I would complain and complain to the landlord, but what can they do? If dogs are allowed, what can they do? Uh, don't give suggestions. I've been through all this. It's a very sore subject at this point. We're still doing the best we can. So what do you do when your dog barks all day and your neighbors are complaining? You get another dog. That's the right thing to do, isn't it? So now there's two dogs that bark all day. And I don't, I don't know why. All I can think is that one of the, the persons over there is home and ignoring the dog. Because it'll be quiet. Like right now it's quiet. 
But then I think somebody comes home and does not let the dog out of wherever it's penned up in a bedroom or something. And then the dog barks and barks and barks because somebody's home and it wants out and the person doesn't let it out. So this weekend when we left, I looked over and there's a girl with a third dog, puppy. So now there's three dogs over there. Two of them are barkers. And it's, you know, it, it's just horrible. I've called animal control. They can't do anything. They have to wait um, for a call from a sheriff or something. So that was like a whole nother thing. I don't want to have to call the police on them. But there are days, and especially this past month, which has been rough on me, um... There have been days where I just, like, I'd write, I'd text my husband and say, if I was face-to-face -face with that girl right now, I would punch her right in the face. Because I, I'm not up all day long. Um, I have real problems with, with fatigue. So I'll be up for a couple hours and then I'll take a little nap. Just kind of clears my head a little and enables me to keep going. Um, but when you're trying to take a nap and there's a dog barking nonstop, it, it just doesn't happen. It's, it's so frustrating. Yeah, you know, and I have issues with getting frustrated to begin with. My brain is just wired differently than it used to. I swear I used to be the most mellow person. And uh, I'm just not anymore. You might disagree. I don't know. I have my moments. So what exciting things are happening in your life? It's funny. I think back on like when my kids were little and I was doing the single mom thing. They went with their dad every other weekend. But the rest of the time, it was all me. And I was such a... A go-getter. I just kept going and, and did everything that needed to be done. And uh, get up in the morning and the kids would be still sleeping. And I would get them both dressed while they were asleep. Put them in the car. Take them off to their daycare. Which was set up like a little school. Um, set them up in their classes with, with a bowl of cereal or something to eat. Uh, make food that they could carry in the car. It, but it was hard when they were in the, that little because sometimes they wouldn't really even wake up till they were in their classroom. I'd go to work work a full day i'd go food shopping on my lunch hour get that done drive them home then we had some activities there'd be girl scouts or boy scouts or choir or when they were older bell choir marching band drama club a lot of driving around and I, I just always felt like I was on the go. Yeah, I never stopped. And now, if I do one little thing, I'm, I'm exhausted. I need a nap. Sometimes I just keep going. I, when I was a, 
when I, I had my first stroke in 2009 and it was, I mean, it was pretty traumatic, but it wasn't as bad as my second stroke. Um, basically it, it just affected my balance. So I, I could, I had a lot of trouble walking for a while. And I went to specialized physical therapy for balance issues and had a lot of exercises and I finally got to the point where I didn't need my walker or a cane. I was back to walking normally and I went back to work. But I did not understand about fatigue, neuro fatigue. Um, they don't really know why that happens, but almost everyone who's had a stroke suffers with crippling fatigue. And uh, at first they tell you, just sleep, your brain heals when you're asleep, which it, it doesn't really. Your, your brain, part of your brain dies when you have a stroke. But um, no connections between your neurons are, are made when you're sleeping. So it, it helps that. So you should sleep as much as you can, which is good because, you know, you would sleep all the time. Except then, because your brain is damaged, your sleep patterns are all screwed up. I don't think I slept normally for four years after my stroke. And, uh, Finally, I can sleep and stay asleep. Well, it's easy to fall asleep. It's hard to stay asleep when you've had a stroke. Um, for me, I finally figured out that every little thing wakes me up now. I used to sleep like a log. People were like, did you hear that last night? I'm like, no. I didn't hear a thing. I was, once I'm out, I'm out. Um, but now, my husband likes to have the TV on at night. And I will sneak over and turn down the volume or just turn it off. If he's snoring, I just turn it off. Because I can't sleep with any noise like that. It, I just... I crave the quiet and peace of a quiet room. And it's still hard for me to fathom because if you're if you're a heavy sleeper your whole life and then suddenly you just aren't, it's hard to change your story. And it's even it's even hard um to come to to grips with that that you may have changed that something in you has changed and uh, okay that's all of this color I've just forgotten what color I had Twenty-two. Okay. And see, I just totally forgot what I was talking about. I think I changed subjects so many times I lost track. Uh, some, I was watching some uh, reading on a group. Somebody was saying, you know, oh, I don't like those three D printed trays. The drills don't slide and they don't all always come out. Like, no, like everything else, sometimes you have to tap it. It's when did we when did we get too lazy to just tap a tray? <laughs> Funny. 
I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I'm just joking. And if I did, if you didn't mean it, why did you say it? I remember, um, I think it was 99, 96, my mom and I went to uh, Seattle and we spent 10 days with my uncle and his wife, my mom's brother, and um, visited and and it was such a wonderful visit with my mom and my uncle he he like drove us around to all these different houses that they lived in my, uh, my grandfather was in the navy so they oh this is a cool story when world war he, he went in the navy he lied about his age when he was 17 I think and served his time in the Navy and then he left the Navy and married my grandmother and had four children and they moved around a lot he was a, a very interesting man he um he was very creative. He drew and he carved wood and he could build and he was very handy, could fix things. But then when World War II happened and Pearl Harbor happened, he was exempt. He was a married man with four kids, but he went and re-enlisted. And went off to war leaving my grandmother at home with four kids and no job w women didn't work back then so, and no job so what he did is he bought this property or they rented or something that was a little tiny farm and they had a, a barn, they had a horse, they had a goat for milk. Um, my mom said they used to ride the horse to school every day. Is that an F or an R? I want to say F, but it could be an R. All right. I, see, I use my light pad to light up my key, too. And sometimes I really can't tell what... There's an F. There is no R, so it has to be an F. Number 20. Um, so they had this little farm, and they grew all their own food. So they could live... So that they had food to live on. And um, milk from their goat. And so my mom knows a lot about you know how to um, how to pluck a chicken. How to oh she made the she makes the best pies. Find out later she she won a pie contest when she was in high school. But we had a wonderful time visiting with my uncle and, you know, at that point I was a young adult with kids of my own and had started to realize that, you know, my family's sense of humor is a little bit harsher than other families. We, um... There are things said that I just thought were hysterical that I learned that you can't always repeat to other people because they think you're a monster. Anyway, I, after spending about a week there of our 10 day visit, <laughs> I was 
talking to my uncle and he said something that I just thought was the funniest thing. And finally I said, you know, I just, I feel like I found my people. Like I can make my jokes and you think they're funny because you get it. You know, I'm not mean. I'm not a monster. I'm just, we're the same. We had the same sense of humor. And, um, you know, after growing up out there, my mom's family was around Colorado and Seattle, Washington area. So we didn't see them a lot growing up. There were a couple visits uh, that stick in my mind because it was rare. But I always wish that I had more exposure to my mom's family because they're just so funny. Like me. <laughs> I had such a wonderful time at the wedding, spending time with my siblings and my parents were there. And uh, the wedding was just beautiful. Like I said, the old New England church, they had an Abraham Lincoln bench because Abraham Lincoln had gone there to visit his son who was in the Exeter Academy. And Lincoln sat on that, that pew. So they had that pew separated in a different part of the building. It was the Lincoln pew, which I thought was pretty wonderful. Okay, oh, there's one. You know when you're about to, or you already have put your drills away and then you find that one last spot. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this off here. An hour is pretty good. Um, again, if you look in the description, I'll put links to everything, to Dan's Etsy shop for the trays to Elizabeth's Etsy shop for the um, hippo holder, uh, to Denise's Etsy shop for her pens. And I have to say this, I am not a fan of the polymer clay pens, but these ones are just beautiful. There's a lot of skill that goes into her pens and they're, they're better than any that I've seen. Um, polymer clay is one of those things that I think anybody could do, but only a few people really do them well. Can you see the roses on there? They're, they're beautiful. She has some with butterflies. Oh, I just love, um, and look for some more videos. I've got some unboxings I see an Amazon box over there and I've got a couple in the bedroom and I have all my framing ideas to work on so um, there should be a couple more of how-to videos so hey you have a great day thanks for joining me this is a lot of fun for me I'm gonna try to finish this up and then I'll shoot a video when I finish it so you can see how I Put baby powder around the outside to get rid of the extra sticky and um, I have this beautiful glitter washi tape but the one thing I've noticed is that this bright color uh, maybe not leaves some color on the adhesive so got to get get rid of all that it's gonna be covered up uh, or cover uh, cut off um, yeah, so join me for the next Canvas Conversations. Here's BB. Yes. BB and Charlie had a lot of fun for Halloween. Not really. They hate it, hate it, hate it.
when I put costumes on them. But Halloween is one of my favorites, so I feel perfectly justified in putting them in costumes. Um, I'll, I'll try, I'll put some of those pictures in at the end here. Hey, you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.